Welcome back to the BMO Harris Bank Center. The Ice Sox tied up with the Chicago Wolves. 1-1 the score after 20 minutes of hockey. I'm Mike Peck and uh, honored to be joined by the superintendent at the Illinois Lottery, Michael Jones. Michael, thanks for hopping on here. And, uh, you know, we were talking before we hopped on. I know this is the first time you've seen a, an Ice Sox game here in this building, but this is nothing new, this, this, this rivalry between the Ice Sox and the Wolves. Thanks to the Illinois Lottery, kind of hyped it up a little bit. It's been a lot of fun. Thanks for hopping on with us here. Well, it really is uh, a lot of fun sponsoring anything having to do with hockey. I'm a hockey dad. So my son played hockey from the time he was six, so I'm very familiar with ice rinks and hockey and supporting hockey. Well, the, this rivalry has really picked up also with the Peoria Rivermen. And, you know, a, a lot of people have asked over the last year and a half now, you know, well, what does the Illinois Lottery Cup mean? You know, is it, is, it, is it a big deal? Well, it is a big deal because it's for Rockford. It's 24 games against teams in their division. And I'm sure you're a sports fan. In order to make the playoffs, you got to beat the teams in your division. Well, last year I went to a Peoria Riverman game on Veterans Day because we were also co-sponsoring it with our Veterans Cash game where all the money that uh, it produces goes to veterans' causes. So I'm somewhat familiar with both teams. I'm somewhat very familiar with the Cup, and I wish every one of the three Illinois teams luck, and I hope the rivalry increases as the season goes on. Well, I can tell you from last year, it definitely has between the Ice Sox and the Wolves and the Ice Sox and the Rivermen. Now, the Ice Sox and Wolves, kind of the natural rivalry because of the proximity, not that Peoria is that far down the road, but with the Ice Sox being the Blackhawks affiliate, of course, you know, they, there's always a good crowd at the All-State Arena. Chicago travels great, and that's, that is the cool part for me about this whole Illinois Lottery Cup, is the fact the fans, how much they're into the rivalries, and they travel to the games. Exactly, and uh, again, this American Hockey League I knew very little about till last year, and now I realize the quality of play and the absolute dedication of the players all trying to make it into the bigs. It's like it's like a Hollywood movie. I love coming to these games. Yeah, and this year, of course, with the NHL lockout, there's even added, uh, I guess, uh, ingredients to that mix because there's about five or six guys on each team that would probably be in the NHL. So you're right. This is a great, great league to watch. Well, in the beginning of this game, we gave away two hundred thousand dollars to a lottery winner, and earlier today we gave away three million dollars. I was going to bring winner. that up. Uh, unbelievable. But I got to tell you, the next time I do this, we have to arrange for me to be able to go out and skate and throw the puck around before the game, <laughs> because I look at this and all I want to do is you know skate a bit. We can arrange that. By the way, we're visiting with Michael Jones, the superintendent at the Illinois Lottery. Tonight is another Illinois Lottery. Cup showdown between the Ice Hogs and the Chicago Wolves. Let's talk about that. There's been some lucky folks in this area here through the Illinois Lottery. You mentioned the $3 million uh, press conference you had today to, to, to give away. That was a scratch-off ticket, right? It was. It was the, the Metzger family. They pulled up in front of a uh, lottery retailer, and the wife sent the husband in for a Diet Coke and buy a lottery ticket. And he went in to buy a lottery ticket and thought, what the heck, bought a $30 ticket, which was way out of their budget for lottery tickets. Yep. And they came back out and she told the story of that they scratch off and they discover they have a winning number and they start scratching off the prize and they get to 300 and she goes, I won $3,000. <laughs> and the husband goes, well, hold on just a second, there's more to scratch. And they realized they had won $3 million. Unbelievable. Which just shows you, I mean, it's, it's our brand campaign, yep. but it is, anything's possible. I mean, all Absolutely. you have to do is try. See now, what happens. when, when a, a Powerball or, or a Mega Millions gets up to, you know, even if it's at $12 million where it starts, correct? But even when it gets up to that $200 million, $300 million, how bad are you guys keeping your fingers crossed that there's going to be a winner in the state of Illinois? Well, if you remember last March, the largest yeah. grand prize in lottery history in the solar system was $656 million, yep. and one of the three winners was from Red Bud, Illinois. Yep. Well, if anything proves that everybody has an equal chance and that anything's possible, it is that a little store in Red Bud, Illinois sold one of three winning tickets. So it's really more that, uh, you know, if you choose to play you have an equal chance of winning and uh if you do win uh it's the most fun part of my job oh i bet you the big check like I, you probably have some great stories about just meeting families and meeting people that have won i mean you know twenty thousand dollars is a life-changing amount of money i couldn't imagine uh, you know three million dollars that's got to be really neat for you to to have that opportunity to present those checks well i tell you mike it's very humbling because when you do meet people who uh have beaten the odds and have won the large amounts of money, their first reaction when you ask them about what they're going to do with the money is almost always altruistic. Like the couple today, the Metzgers, won $3 million. 
first thing that they did with the money was donate to their church. Wow. The sure, second thing great. they did was to donate to St. Jude's mm -hmm. Fund. Yep. Third thing was to arrange to make sure that their grandchildren and their children were taken care of. Now, that's just a humbling American experience of yeah. altruism. Absolutely. Michael Jones, our guest here, the superintendent at the Illinois Lottery. We'll keep you for a couple more minutes. You're, you're all over the place. You were down, uh, you know, handing out the check. You did the puck drive. You're up here. I even heard you on the PA up here for uh, for, for a quick second there. Well, back in my youth, my first real job, really, was uh, running a soccer team in the North American Soccer League, if you remember the I, I, I Pele actually do. and yep. Giorgio Canalia. And when I come to an arena like this, I almost start working the crowd. <laughs> I start checking the... I start checking concessions, and are the ticket takers going okay? So if you've seen me all over the stadium, it's not just lottery duties. It's going back into the old habits. Yeah, it's funny how that works, right? I get a little, when I go to a sporting event now, uh, particularly, I guess, baseball, because that's hockey's off season. I get a little uncomfortable for the first half hour because I'm not doing anything. I'm sitting there watching the game. It's like, I, I feel like I should be up doing something. Yeah, you should work the crowd. The same thing, I used to work in rock and roll radio, so I can't go to sporting events or concerts without working a bit. So it's just in the blood once it gets in the blood. Well, Michael, I really appreciate you hopping on. We love this Illinois Lottery Cup. Uh, it's really uh, enhanced the rivalries even more between Rockford, Chicago, and Peoria. And I, I hope we see you hopefully back here, uh, if not in the spring, maybe early next season, presenting the Ice Sox with the Cup. We're struggling, but there's a lot of hockey left. Well, I'll tell you, if, I, if invited, I will appear. And if invited, the next time I appear, I want to skate. Well, we can arrange Anything's that. Anything's possible. Anything <laughs> is possible. That is. Well, thanks for hopping on. I really thanks, appreciate, Mike, appreciate it. appreciate it. All right. Well, we're going to step aside for a quick timeout. When we return, Slothcore and I will break down Period number one, we're tied 1-1. The Ice Hogs and the Wolves Dental Dimension First Intermission Report.